Hello, I am Xian J. Zhao, the author of Zachary Yen and the Dragon Emperor, which is a middle grade adventure that's like Chinese Percy Jackson meets Yu-Gi-Oh. It is about Zach, a Chinese American boy who didn't really grow up attached to his Chinese heritage, but then one day, the spirit of the first emperor of China possesses his AR gaming headset and compels him on a journey across China to defeat figures from history and myth and heist real artifacts. And during the journey, Zach has to learn a lot of Chinese history because his magic is tied to the legend of the first emperor of China. So I'm going to read a section from this book. Xing Shi Huang continued, I'm afraid I'm permanently bound to this device the way I should have been permanently bound to you. However, it's still possible to improve our spiritual connection by improving your knowledge of my legend. He gestured backward at the screen. Has this documentary given you a good grasp of it? It was paused on an actor's depiction of him, raising a glinting sword in what looked like a shadowy, firelit palace chamber. The actor, bearded and buff, looked a lot older than how Qing Shi Huang appeared to Zack. Um, Zack strained to gather the fragments of facts that had made it through his storming thoughts. So you were a prince born in the middle of a lot of wars? When you were only 13, you became the king of Qing? Qing Shi Huang huffed. Let me put it into terms you can more readily understand. About 3,000 years ago, there were over 100 states in the lands that would become China. Three legendary dynasties had claimed sovereignty over them all, but they were mere figureheads. After the states stopped respecting those figureheads, they descended into a knockout competition like one of your American reality TV shows. They gradually swallowed each other up over the 300-year spring and autumn era before whittling down to a top seven, also known as the Seven Warring States. That round of finals continued for another 200 years before I defeated them all in a rapid-fire 10-year campaign. Yes, I won ancient Chinese-American idol. Qin Shi Huang recoiled. Ancient Chinese idol? Whatever. It was a lot of info, yet all Zach could think to ask was, How the heck do you know what American Idol is? Chinese Americans, remember? No reason Chinese culture and American culture can't overlap. Back in American Idol's heyday, George Washington made some of us watch it with him. Qing Shi Huang shook his head. Its entertainment value greatly plummeted after Simon Cowell's departure. Who was some of us? Me? Alex? Alex? A conqueror from Europe. Macedonia, was it? Alexander the Great? You're friends with Alexander the Great? You know him, but you don't know me? Qing Shi Huang scoffed. He, he's Alexander the Great. I was literally just doing a presentation on him for history class. And I am Qing Shi Huang, the first emperor of China. And like Alex, I actually achieved my goal of conquering all the way to the Pacific Ocean. He's a decent lad, though. I taught him how to play Mahjong. He and I and Ram and Genghis get together and enjoy a few games every few decades. The names deciphered themselves in Zack's head. You play Mahjong with Alexander the Great, Ramses the Second, and Genghis Khan? How do you know all of them except me? I am as much of an A-list conqueror as any of them, Qin Shi Huang spluttered, then put his fingers to his temples just under his headdress. His eyes squeezed closed and his demeanor mellowed. Ah, it's not your fault. Such nonsense that children in China are bombarded with Western legends and history, while children in the West are taught nothing beyond the typical Europeans, the occasional Egyptian, and maybe Genghis Khan. Maybe you're not as A-list as you thought, Zack mumbled. You listen here, Qin Shi Huang whipped his finger towards Zack. I am the only conqueror in any history to have eliminated all possible enemies and had my governing system persist for over 2,000 years. I ruled over my entire known world. I literally ran out of places to take over. The only reason I get snubbed on these conqueror lists is because my empire is still a single country. Can they say that? Why aren't you telling him the part where your dynasty fell apart in just 15 years? Simon suddenly quipped. No, with that confident tone, relaxed grin, and smooth English, it wasn't Simon. Tang Taizong had taken over. Zack wondered what happened to Simon when he did. If Simon's mind would retreat into his body and lose all control of it, becoming a spectator to his own existence, like what had briefly happened to Zack. Zack shuddered. He was torn between being glad that couldn't happen again and feeling guilty, because if he hadn't kicked Xin Shi Huang out, the demons probably wouldn't have stood a chance at taking his mom. Anyway, that was a little bit from Zachary Yin and the Dragon Emperor. Thanks for listening! Yeah.